If you're a Taste of Home fan, or maybe you're just looking for tried and true recipes with simple ingredients, I am here to share some of the best of the best from Taste of Home. Welcome to Meals with Maria. Today I have what I consider to be some of the best of the best tried and true recipes from one of my favorite websites, cookbooks, places to find recipes, Taste of Home. I find that the recipes on this website are always super simple, low ingredient, and inexpensive. I know these recipes will be surefire hits on your upcoming meal plans, so let's check them out. We're gonna start off by making a favorite chicken pot pie. This is one of the top 10 recipes on Taste of Home, and it's definitely a top 10 in my household as well. My husband was just talking about how much he loves chicken pot pie, and I had great news for him because I was like, I'm actually gonna make one, and you're gonna love it. I'm actually just gonna make half of the recipe today. So you wanna start with one cup of diced peeled potatoes and then about three quarters to a cup of sliced and peeled carrots. And then you wanna pour your carrots and your potatoes into a large saucepan with water. And then you wanna bring that to a boil, reduce the heat and cook uncovered for eight to 10 minutes until crisp and tender. In the meantime, chop up one onion and then you'll see that I have a half a cup of butter cubed on the side there. You're also going to want that for one of your ingredients. Add the cubed butter to a saucepan over medium high heat. And then you wanna add your onion and cook until it's tender, about five or six minutes. Add in a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a half a teaspoon of crushed black pepper. Stir in a half a cup of flour until well blended. You wanna slowly add in three quarters a cup of milk and a cup and a half of chicken broth. And this is gonna get quite thick. If I was gonna do this again, I would actually do it in a larger pan or pot because it ends up making quite a bit. But it really makes a nice thick sauce to go inside of your chicken pot pie. I have had chicken pot pies before that were too dry and I've also had them that were too runny. And the reason this is called perfect chicken, or favorite, sorry, it's not perfect, but it is perfect. Favorite chicken pot pie is because that inside filling is exactly how you want it to be on a chicken pot pie. It is not too runny, it is not too thick, it is just right. And you'll notice that my chicken broth per se is actually using water with better than bouillon vegetable base. Whatever you have on hand is gonna do here. So if you have a chicken stock, chicken bouillon, uh, even just water and salt, if you're in a bind, you can always use that in place of a, a stock or a broth. You wanna stir that consistently for a couple of minutes until it thickens up to the right consistency. And then add a half a cup of frozen mixed vegetables. The recipe actually says a half a cup of frozen peas and a half a cup of frozen corn, but I had frozen mixed, so I just added that in and I find that that's always a fine substitute in a chicken pot pie like this. Then you also wanna add in two cups of cooked or cubed chicken. You can use a rotisserie for this, that's what I did. You can cook up a chicken and use your leftovers for it. And Canned chicken is also always a really good option when you're making a chicken pot pie. It's a very budget-friendly option. You also wanna add that potato and carrot mixture that should have been drained and removed at that eight to 10 minute mark in the water. And then you can actually just mix it all up, remove it from the heat. We're gonna just unroll, or actually I don't even have to unroll because mine were already in the pie pans. It's just the ones that I could get that day. Two nine inch pie plates and then I'm actually just gonna make, since I'm making half the recipe, I'm just gonna make one pie, but you could always do two if you double what I did. <laughs> and then uh, pour in your whole chicken mixture, cover it up with the top of the other pie crust. Make sure to seal it nice and tight, make little cute edges if you can, put a slit in the top, and then we're gonna bake this for 35 to 40 minutes until that crust is lightly browned at 425 degrees. And then you do want to let it stand for about 15 minutes before you cut into it. And holy moly, this is so delicious. This is definitely the best, the favorite chicken pot pie in my book. I'll never go with another recipe on it. Uh, totally worth it. And huge fit with the family. Like I said, this is one of my husband's favorite, but the kids absolutely loved it as well. pop in here for a minute to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Cook Unity. You know I'm a huge proponent of cooking at home, but sometimes there just isn't time and other times you just need a break. 
Ordering takeout or going to a restaurant is expensive. That is where Cook Unity comes in. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared meals that are pre-selected weekly right to your door. Cook Unity offers a wide range of different preference and filters so that you can choose the meals that are right for you. They offer vegan, gluten-free, paleo, and more. The chefs focus on flavor and inventiveness while leaning into a wide variety of different types of cuisines to bring you the best meals possible. Meals are delivered fully cooked, so all you have to do is heat them up. Through a weekly subscription, you can select from a robust and ever-changing menu of handcrafted meals. I couldn't believe how many choices there were, and it was hard for me to choose. But in the end, I did choose some excellent meals. The subscription is super flexible, and you can pause, skip weeks, or cancel at any time. I personally tried the seared pepper hanger steak with roasted potato and horseradish cream made by Chef Raimundo Agrazo. It's hard to say these names, but they are authentic. And it was delicious and perfectly cooked. I also had the chicken korma, which is one of my favorite Indian dishes created by Chef Akhtar Nawab. The flavor was on point and I was able to have a delicious Indian meal without even picking up the phone or going to a restaurant. And I tried the orchetti with Middle Eastern beef ragu created by Chef Init Admoni. It had a green olives, feta, and breadcrumbs. So this was especially fun because it's definitely not something I'd make at home. All of these meals were crafted in Brooklyn, New York, and I was so pleased with the different flavors that are outside of my own personal comfort cooking zone. To try Cook Unity for yourself, go ahead and click the link in my description box and use the code MEALSWITHMARIA50 or go to cookunity.com slash MEALSWITHMARIA to get 50% off your first order. The next top recipe from Taste of Home is creamy white chili. This is phenomenal and so easy to make. It's just super easy to throw together and pretty much have any night of the week as long as you have a few things on hand. You wanna start by chopping up one onion as with most recipes. And then you are gonna need two cans of chopped green chilies, but I didn't have those. So I just kind of swapped that out with one jalapeno chopped up. Because we were also gonna add some sour cream and some regular cream, I felt like comfortable putting a hot pepper in there even if I was serving it to my entire family. And it really wasn't too spicy. So that's a good option for you if you don't have the green chilies on hand. You can use a jalapeno. I think even pickled jalapeno would be good too. And then you need a pound or so of cubed chicken breast. So I just had boneless skinless chicken breasts and I cut them into about half inch cubes. Right here. In a large saucepan, or I'm using a Dutch oven, you wanna saute the chicken, onion, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder in about a tablespoon of oil until the chicken is no longer pink. Then you wanna rinse and drain two cans of great northern beans, and we're gonna add 14 and a half ounces of chicken broth right to the chicken and onion and jalapeno mixture. You also want to add those beans in there, as well as one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of dried oregano, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, and if you'd like, you can do a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I always veer away from that because it's a little spicy for us. You want to bring this to a boil and then reduce your heat and simmer uncovered for about 30 minutes. Then you can just remove it from the heat or turn the heat off and stir in one cup of sour cream and a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. In the case of something like this, I always think you could swap out some cream cheese or you could just use whole milk if you don't happen to have the heavy cream. You know, make it your own because the flavor is already here and this is so delicious. My kids loved it. I actually had my dad and my stepmom over and they really enjoyed it as well. We served it with some sour cream, some shredded cheddar and a little bit of cilantro. Right here we have boiling soup. I was so happy to find that little cameo in here. Made it a little bit more fun. Now we're gonna make an Amish breakfast casserole. You wanna start with about a pound of bacon diced and one medium onion chopped. Cook your bacon and your onion over medium heat until your bacon is crisp and then you wanna drain that. While that's cooking, you can combine six large eggs.
Then add in one and a half cups of cottage cheese and two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. And then you want four cups of frozen shredded hash browns, but you wanna make sure that they are thawed. So if you haven't thawed them in the refrigerator ahead of time, go ahead and thaw those out in the microwave. You really do not wanna cook this with the frozen hash browns because it would take a very, very long time in the oven and everything would not cook evenly. So you wanna make sure that those are definitely thawed out before you add them. You also wanna add one and a quarter cups of either shredded Swiss cheese, or I ended up using shredded Gouda cheese because I didn't have Swiss. And I know that Gouda tastes absolutely delicious with eggs so maybe it's not the traditional Amish casserole but with the Gouda it tastes great as well. I am traditionally shredding it though right? Then you can stir in your bacon mixture and you want to transfer the entire thing once well mixed to a greased 9 by 13 baking dish. pretty simple and delicious breakfast. This served my family of four and a half that eat uh, for two mornings and it was absolutely delicious and I would make it again. It's been added to the rotation. I really like adding that cottage cheese to it. it gives it a lot of fluff and flavor. If you're trying to cut down on cost, you can really make this casserole a lot more affordable by using the reconstituted shredded potatoes. You can get those at the Dollar Tree, like the little uh, hungry, I think it was a hungry man or something. And you could also use ham instead of bacon. You can get that small container of like budding, I think, or budding at Walmart for like 70 something cents. And that would be the perfect amount to add to a casserole like this. So you could really make some budget swaps that can make this very affordable and still very delicious. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I hope you like these taste of home recipes as much as I do. Make sure to check out Cook Unity by clicking the link in my description box or going to cookunity slash meals with Maria. And I'll see you all very soon. I was out of you.